So guns are pretty awesome, right? Here we've got Christian Grindel, our uh, local gun expert. And today we're going to be shooting what? Not this. Not that. Sorry. Today we are shooting Beretta M9. Not quite as powerful, but I think we'll have some fun. Hell yeah. Thanks for coming out and doing this. Let's shoot some stuff. Murica. We got 9mm Parabellum or Luger, whatever you want to call it. 15 round capacity. We're shooting full metal jackets today. 100 and. What are we shooting today? 115 grain. So, what's the uh, approximate muzzle velocity for these rounds? Yeah, you're looking at about 1200 to 1250 feet per second. So, basically, we're gonna have to crank the high speed camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Go. Yep. Did you hear that ricochet? Did it? Yeah. So now that we've taken a look at the actual uh, slide action on the gun, taken a close look at it, uh, we've got some targets we're going to shoot, and first up is some soda. And Christian over here is going to shoot it, we'll see what happens. So now that we shot our first target, the soda, we're going to shoot an egg. And uh, what do you think, Christian? You can shoot it? Absolutely. All right. I believe in him. Shoot whenever you want. All right. Oh! Oh my god. I told you. You didn't think I could do it. I murked that shit. I got it my hair. <laughs> Can you see this, Grace? Change the focus so it's in focus. Look at that. It actually, actually here. It. I'm gonna get real close. In it. Is there? Yeah. I'm gonna put my earplugs. One little piece got me ringing. Oh no, I'm good. So you're kind of far enough away. Alright, and. Go. Yes! Ah. Yes! <laughs> so for our last target, we're going to shoot a ceramic plate and uh, try to hit it dead center, see if we can get it to open up in slow motion. Think you can hit that? Absolutely. You hit an egg, I think you can. Hit a plate. America. Go. Fire. 
That was good. So now that we're done with the gun episode, uh, we're going to head back to base camp and take a look at the footage. And I want to give a thank you to Pedro for letting us use the property. You're thank welcome. you, man. You're welcome. Uh, he got to shoot the gun too, just so we didn't leave him out. And we're going to turn off the camera and shoot the real gun. See you next week. So I think the most interesting thing I found um, immediately while filming these guns was just how fast that bullet travels. I remember when I did the BB gun episode, I think I measured the velocity a, a few hundred feet per second, something like that. Not terribly fast. But in this shot first that we did at 2500 frames per second, and keep in mind this is 100 times slower than how you perceive life uh, normally. And we only get one frame of the bullet before it is past um, the frame we had. But this was really just to look at the actual slide action and just the mechanics of the gun itself. So, so that was okay. You'll see right here, we do have one frame of a muzzle flare um, before the bullet actually exits. And uh, that's actually due to um, some of the grain that didn't burn yet. And it actually been pushed through the rifling in the barrel ahead of the bullet. And that burned as it exited. And so we have a little plume right there. And then the next frame, the bullet's exiting. We have a little bit more flare right there from the gases behind it. And then it comes out at, what was the muzzle velocity again? 1250 feet per second. 1250 feet per second. And we've got some slight action there. It shoots out the empty casing, and then it rechambers another one. So let's take a look at it uh, four times slower than that at 10,000 frames per second. For this shot, we have it much closer up to the gun so we can get a, you know, a better look at it. While we do get a lot more frames of the muzzle flare over here, another thing that I noticed was we actually have some escaping gases coming out of this crack right there. Keep in mind, when a primer is struck, it ignites the powder, the casing expands in the chamber. But with all that extra pressure, also forcing the bullet down the tube, sometimes the powder forces its way past the casing. So that's where we get that extra okay. gunpowder coming out there. So, so even though the casing's held in place right there, just from the sheer explosion of that powder, it, sometimes it just... Can't keep all of it in there. Exactly. It's even worse with steel case ammo. With this is brass, so it's softer, it seals better. But when you get steel case ammo in there, it doesn't expand as well. So you definitely get a lot more blowback and a lot more fouling in the action. Which is why Russians have never won a war. <laughs> Alright, so one thing I'm noticing right here, at about the third frame of the muzzle flare, we have, and it's kind of hard to see, we have some uh, air moving around and sort of like a donut that's like rolling through the air. And what's what that called? It's called a toroidal vortex. And basically, as the gas gets shoved forward in front of the bullet, as it comes out, instead of going forward, it now has a place to move out of the way. So as it comes out, it'll actually roll out. And that causes like a, if you imagine like a donut or a bagel being like rolled as it goes through the air, that's just what the gases are doing as it comes out. And then the bullet exits, it goes right through that, and you can actually see some more of the displacement of air underneath it as well. So that's some, some pretty cool mechanics of the gun itself. So while shooting a gun looks cool, it also looks cool to hit a target. And I know on High Speed Fanatics we use soda a lot, but it's also a really good target. And while Christian didn't hit it dead in the middle, um, it actually caused some, some pretty, pretty cool things to happen to the can. And this just shows how fast this bullet is moving. In one frame at 2500 frames per second, it's moved, what would you say that is, six inches maybe? Five, six inches? Roughly. And then you hit the very side of it. And if you remember from the BB gun episode, when that BB enters the soda, it actually pushes all of it out and it causes uh, cavitation and it causes a lot of pressure to move outwards. So since he hit the left side of the can, a lot of the pressure is going to be exerted through the fluid to the right and up and down. So that's why we get the can 
to sort of like bend apart like that and get shoved this way. And then equal and opposite force, a lot of the uh, soda gets pushed and basically where that opening was made. Which is why when you hit it dead center, you get hit in the face with soda. As we experienced. Yes. So now that we've cranked up the high speed camera to 10,000 frames per second again, uh, you can see that we actually have quite a bit more frames where we can actually examine the bullet uh, before it hits the, the coke can. And this was quite a bit more dead center. Um, not, still not perfect though, but that's hard with a, a cylindrical object, as you said. But I'm noticing right as it enters, whatever fluid was immediately there is instantly vaporized, both from just the sheer impact and probably from the round being pretty hot from all those gases that were burning. And so we see we see the entrance hole. We can actually see the metal creasing right there from the force. And then it exits and tears it apart. And it's basically exactly what happened in the last shot, but on the other side. So that's why the can goes this way, and a lot of the soda is coming at the screen. This would be a good 3D shot if I had two cameras. The egg was more of a test of Christian's marksman abilities, and I can say I was, I was genuinely impressed when he uh, hit it the first time. Uh, this being 25,000, or no, 2,500 frames per second. It was hard to see the bullet right there, but if we do it frame by frame, it was a dark background, but the bullet's right there, right there, and hit it dead center. Mmm, breakfast. And it basically has turned uh, the egg into, from an oblate spheroid to an omelet. To a sphere, that's what I was thinking, but an omelet's good as well. Yeah, it's basically all of this force, now that it's entered the liquid, is almost equally distributed for all around it. So that's why we get all of these uh, cracks pretty much the same size before it explodes. Actually, look at that. You see that shoot up? Nice. That's pretty cool. The pressure was so great from the egg, it forced quite a bit of it into the water bottle and the yeah, back pressure some droplets coming out yeah the back pressure actually forcing the water out of the bottle sort of like if we watch it kind of quickly you can you can see it forces the water bottle like bounce real quick right there and then that causes it agitates the water so much it flies out and we've got some droplets coming out he only had one shot he needed for both of these and at 10,000 frames per second while it wasn't perfect, that's pretty close to dead center. It's an egg, Bryce. It's, it's, it's an, an egg. egg. And you can see actually the first frame of impact, a lot of the shell has been vaporized, but we don't have any cracks yet. And one frame later, we have a lot of cracks around the entrance, but we also have one big crack that has probably traveled most of the way around it. And that just shows what the speed of sound in a solid object is, how fast cracks can move. That's why it's hard to catch glass shattering on a high-speed camera, just because it moves so, so fast. And the bullet exits right there, and everything just expands out in a, a sphere. It looks like a like if you were at a, an astronomy tower, all the like stars around you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. See, shooting can also be a form of art. We could, we could try shooting like water balloons of paint and make some art. That would be cool. All right, this one um, wasn't really a test of marksman abilities as it was just to see something cool because it plates awfully big. And this first shot, while it wasn't dead center, still showed just how fast glass can crack. After the first frame, Wait, do you see, does that, is that a flash point? What is that? Do you see that? It looks like something's igniting. It looks like a little flash. What do you think that is? Is that a ceramic plate? Yeah. Could very well be a spark. You think so? Do you think it just hit it so hard that whatever air was in between the plate and the, and the bullet compressed so quickly and got out of the way that it... it could be. I don't know. Yeah, so one frame after impact, the cracks are mostly all the way through. 
next frame, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty much all done. And the rest is just whatever energy was imparted into the plate is what gets divided amongst all these pieces. And that's why the big pieces hardly move, but the little pieces fly away. And that's just conservation of momentum and energy. So here, the plate again at 10,000 frames per second. You can see, again, right at the impact, the ceramic material is vaporized into a dust. And it seems like whatever a bullet hits is whatever is directly in the way, that's going to happen to it. We haven't. We actually have a few frames where the cracks are barely visible, or just trying to make their way to the edge, and then once they get there, that's when the plate starts falling apart. And it's weird to actually see that progression because it seems as if it's an instant event because you see it that way. It seems like it should happen at once, but slowing things down can really reveal some. It's a pretty crazy things. And this was a lot more dead center and I'm kind of surprised that it left such a big chunk there. You'd think it would spread radially and equally, but... It did hit a little bit closer to the top yeah. than dead center. Yeah, just seeing these pieces flying just reminds me of how slow this really is. Because just washing it, it's just like, pop, on the ground, done. We actually, if you remember from the BB gun episode when I had the yardstick held up, we did 25,000 frames per second. Uh, but this time I actually took the liberty of making um, some sort of scientific apparatus, a measuring device, and it's basically just paper with electrical tape on it. <laughs> and these are placed at every two inch intervals, so there's like an inch there, an inch there, an inch there. And so we can use that to calculate <laughs> muzzle velocity of the bullet and so you can actually see since the gun was right here all that expanding gas basically tore the paper off but we did get the bullet in time so we actually just want to count and see how long this took all right so first frame it's at the one inch mark approximately this isn't going to be perfect and if we count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, would you say, frames? 17, 17 frames. Roughly. 17 frames. 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 And so I basically just took those two numbers and divided them, and we ended up with 1,225, which is essentially spot on because you said the range was what? Between 12 1200 and 1250. And 1250, so basically right in between. So I, I'd say that's a, a fair calculation. So that was all of our shots we did. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we're definitely going to have more gun episodes in the future, things like rifle, shotguns, the AR eventually. Grenade we're, launches. Of course, those two. Grace is still here. She's behind the camera. Um, again, like our issue with Jake from the skateboarding episode, we just don't have room here. Hi, everybody. Yeah, she's here. So thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this week's episode of High Speed Fanatics. You can follow us on Twitter at username HighSpeedFans. You can also find us at facebook.com slash highspeedfanatics. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to send us an email at highspeedfanatics at gmail.com.